Welcome to TFRSoft's instructional video on reliability growth. Now, if you're doing accelerated testing, you're going to like this video because we're going to show you a new method for doing uh, accelerated reliability growth using a chi-squared method that's unavailable uh, for any other uh, routine that we know of. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to be reporting on that in RAMS. And you have that uh, in your package when you buy this. And you're going to be able to report to your manager, uh, if you're doing accelerated testing, what that means in terms of reliability growth. So let's hyperlink over to it and let's get to it. <clears throat> uh, so there's a number of methods here. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at the traditional methods first. And then we're going to talk about the chi-squared method. The traditional method, the MIL standard 189, uh, what we've done is we've made an improvement to that where um, we reported that at a conference on uh, how to do accelerated reliability, uh, uh, adding acceleration factors to the MIL standard 189 method. <clears throat> and um, so the acceleration factors you can put in there uh, over your test phases. Uh, um, that you're allowed to do and you can put your initial and your start MTBFs and things like that like you normally would with the mill stand 189 and to the right are your initials and finals MTBFs and you can see your reliability growth through the phases and the plots are provided down below for your unaccelerated growth that would have occurred for this growth alpha compared to your accelerated reliability growth that would occur over those phases that you tested. The next uh, method is the traditional Crow-AMSA method, uh, Duane method or Crow-AMSA. Uh, both of those are, are mathematically provided. And uh, we've improved this where we're using uh, not only acceleration factors for the Duane method as well, but also allows you to do multiple test uh, uh, analysis. And you can uh, uh, put in the number of failures that you found, not the cumulative numbers. Uh, and you enter your uh, test uh, failure time that occurred and the samples that were tested and your acceleration factors. And it gives you the reliability growth using the Duane method. And uh, there's a little handy calculator here that you can use for uh, estimating your acceleration factors uh, for the traditional uh, some of the traditional models. <clears throat> Um, then uh, for each graph, uh, you have both your Duane uh, growth and you're also the MTBF QM uh, uh, plot. And down below is your uh, analysis, and it gives you your beta and your growth alpha that was obtained, uh, as well as the Duane and Crow-AMSA uh, growth that is achieved <clears throat> uh, for that. And uh, there's also some analysis methods that you can use for handy analysis tools. And here's your uh, some of the, if you don't know what the parameters are, it gives you the models right here for Duane and Crow-AMSA and the difference between the two and what the parameters mean. Now let's get to the uh, chi-squared method because you're going to like this. Um, here you're doing all this accelerated, you may be, if you're doing accelerated reliability uh, growth uh, testing and uh, you're doing finding and fixing failures, you're going to like this model. You're going to have the ability to report to your manager what your uh, improvements are and uh, to show some of the cost savings that you're doing and, and provide real numbers. <clears throat> this is a premier method. And you start off, uh, it's, uh, we're going to, as I mentioned, report on this at RAMS conference. So it's quite an exciting model. Even though it's fairly simple, it's very powerful. You can start off by putting your confidence just like a normal chi-square estimation. And you have, uh, you put your titles here. So humidity testing, test temperature, shock, and vibration. And these titles will be reflected in your graph, whatever you put in there. Uh, and so in this case, we are doing uh, humidity testing. And um, so we had four groups that we tested in humidity. Um, and you can put your sample sizes there and your test time and your acceleration factor for that test just like you normally would uh, for chi-square model and the number of failures that you observed. And uh, then the beauty of this model is it does not it you can have zero failures. And of course, uh, it's not uh, problematic like it would be in the Duane model. That's another weakness uh, or the crow ampson model. And you the key in reliability growth is your fixed effectiveness. Because uh, without finding and fixing failure modes, you will not have reliability growth. Uh, so that's the way that we do it in the test, analyze, and fix um, uh, regime. 
<clears throat> so uh, what does that mean? So basically, uh, if you have, say, two failures and you fix those that failure mode, uh, you enter the fixed effectiveness percent that you think has occurred. If you're 100% sure that you fixed that failure mode, you would enter 100%. And uh, what would occur would be the number of expected failures, uh, if you repeated that test, would be zero. If you put in 75%, the fractional unit we would expect to find if we repeated that test, a half of the unit that would fail. So <clears throat> that's the difference. And uh, remember, this is a mathematical treatment, so we can get fractional failures. So that's, but it, it's a very powerful method. Let's look at some of the other testing. We had temperature shock, and we after our sample size, test time, acceleration factor, etc. And the number of failures here was one failure. The 75% fixed effectiveness failure meant that uh, if we repeated that test, we'd get a quarter of a unit failure uh, expected if we repeated it. Uh, it also gives you your accelerated hours there. <clears throat> and the vibration as well. So we have a vibration test, and here we had more failures in 75%. So if we had 10, 75% fixed effectiveness value, uh, factor would give us, uh, if we repeated the test, two and a half failures. Now let's look at the results. Well, how do you do results when you have zero uh, failures expected if you repeat the test? Here is what we would do. So, uh, yep, uh, in the if we look at the test results, we have it in terms of whatever units you like. We have it in terms of uh, FITS, MTTF, uh, AFR, annual failure rate, and PPM, parts per million. So uh, three out of the four tests had no uh, improvements. So the initial and final FITS value was the same. Uh, so you see the AFR is the same here, 11.5% expected. And for that test where we actually um, had a failure, uh, had two failures, and uh, we are said our fixed effectiveness factor was 75%. So for example, the AFR went from 34 to 22%. So if we repeated the test, we would expect a 22% uh, AFR. So, uh, and then the beauty, obviously, is we can add the fits for all the tests that we've done, all the humidity tests that we've done, the four groups, and we get a total initial fits and a total final fits, and we get an actual uh, initial and final AFR. So you get credit for all those tests that you may have done on that product. <clears throat> um, and the same thing that goes for your temperature shock uh, testing, you get initial and final, uh, as well as your vibration test. And so the nice thing is that all the tests then can be uh, collate, uh, uh, collated or additive, and you have a initial and final FITS summary, uh, initial and final MTBF, AFR, and things like that. Here we have initial and final for all the tests of 15% and 7%. So uh, now let's look at the results uh, graphically. On the right, every test is provided. Here's the test on to the right. It does the individual testing and shows you that one test that the two units failed in our reliability growth improvement in terms of MTTF, and it's got the AFR graph as well. Here's the temperature shock graph for those three tests. Here's the reliability growth that occurred for the vibration for those four tests that were done. As well as we also have the all test results. And here's the all test results uh, in the red. And we went from a 16% AFR down to a 8% AFR for all testing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we also have the individual test, all test results. So the blue is your humidity test. The uh, uh, pink is the uh, temperature shock and the yellow. And don't forget, you can change graphically the titles of this as well. Anything you can do in Excel, you can do in DFR Soft. So you can manipulate the graphs and change the titles and things like that. And we have the all test results in terms of uh, uh, PPM, uh, MTTF, uh, AFR, uh, and failure rates and fits. So we have to wrap this up. Uh, and we also notice that we also have the traditional alpha and beta slopes that are analyzed for our graphically. Um, and uh, so this is uh, it shows you the power and that you can report to your manager of how, what your improvements is do, uh, occurring when you do your accelerated testing uh, and how much money you're saving on your products by finding and fixing failure modes and testing them. 
Okay, so thank you for the opportunity uh, to explain uh, accelerated reliability growth methods in how DFR Soft handles that. I hope you appreciate the power of DFR Soft and what it can do for your products and in your analysis. Thank you.